And that comes the good stuff. Amen. Amen. Will you pray with me this morning? Almighty God in heaven. Father, I thank you for the praises. And I thank you for bringing us your presence. Lord, thank you for receiving our praises. And we ask, oh Lord, that you move in me right now. Have your way, O oh King. That you might speak unto your people. That we might receive what you have for us, even to thy glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the name of Jesus. You know, one of the things about living this life, we find ourselves troubled. We find ourselves at times going through things and we don't always understand why. Why do I go through this? Why am I dealing with this? Why do I have to do this? And why, why, why? And we never want to really examine ourselves and, and take stock of some of our own shortcomings. We, we tend to want to try to brush them off as uh, that's just the way I am. Well, if God didn't intend for me to do this, I would not do this. And, and we want to, well, if my daddy hadn't or if my mother hadn't or if the situation had been just a little bit different, I wouldn't have. But there is something about lying to oneself that makes me look at a person cross-eyed. You know, I, I just never see the value in lying, so lying to yourself really devalues you. But when we begin to listen to what the word of the Lord says and we begin to apply it as a soothing ointment, as a healing balm to our souls and for our lives, we'll find that God has not forsaken us in troubled times. We'll find that there are those things that when we call upon the name of the Lord, he moves with great speed. And there are those things that he requires that we wait on for a while, you know, because that's the way God is, you know. And so when I look at the children of Israel and I look at the children of America today, we want to sit back on our high horse as Americans and think we're all that in a bag of chips. We think that we are teaching God a really good lesson. In, in morality and humility. You know, God got to get a clue. We know you may have been around when evolution took place, oh God. But you didn't have a right to say that a man must marry a woman or that a woman must marry a man. So in America, we've decided to change God and teach him a little bit. You know, you know, you are Eddie ought to be able to marry Mike. And, and Sandra ought to be able to marry Veronica. Well, you know, get, uh, you know America has to wake up. Uh, because you seem to think that now, now the problem is let somebody drop a bomb in America. Everybody's praying now. Everybody, they don't even know their pastor's name until a bomb hit a floor. Uh, until a truck run over their kid. Huh? Until a fight happens at school, then they want to go to lockdown. Uh, God never nurtured cowardice in a nation. I've never seen where God nurtured cowardice in a nation. We, we, but what do you expect? Look at the ruler of this nation. Come on, preacher. Come on. Tell the truth. Greed and a coward. He's a greedy coward. And a liar to boot. Yeah. So what do you expect? You know, and, and, they, and, and so God's people who are called by his name. Yeah. If we would repent. Yeah. If we'll humble ourselves. Right, call upon his name. Yeah. Uh, then we won't be in such a hurry to go to Oklahoma oh. so we can gamble in the dark. Oh. We won't be wanting to book conferences in Vegas because so-and-so Franklin going to be singing. Oh. Huh? And, and, and Mary and the other one going to be performing. Huh? We'd be on our knees crying out for this nation. Huh? But then we want God to hear everything that we got to say when our leg get broke or when our child breaks a fingernail. Huh? When the man give you a pink slip. Huh? We need to get our minds wrapped around the idea that God is our God all by himself. But our nation is going away backwards and it seeks to ensnare our children by the spirit of wickedness that guides it. Huh? This is a wicked nation. And I remember years ago thinking, why people think the Arabians and all those nuts over there are jealous of us. They think, I mean, well, the reason why they don't like America because they jealous of us. Why? Because we have drinks, drunks on the street living in gutters? Why? Because we have a high um, uh, uh, abortion rate and they don't want to kill their babies? Oh, why, why, do, why are they jealous of us? Huh? Because we're full with hypocrites? At least they know what they worship. 
At least they're on one accord. Huh? But we can't even get on one accord. And what we doing? And then they just jealous of America. Why? Because your child is outside being tricked by some hustler while you looking at days of our lives. Why are they jealous? Because we're saying, oh, it's okay for a man to marry a man. Really? Well, we got, we so smart, we stupid. Huh? Some of the, and, and what are they, they, they don't want that junk over there. Right. You important syphilis, gonorrhea, lying on a great, great order, and then you're sending them Clintons. What they want with the Clintons? <laughs> they probably be, I mean, they paying them just to stay at home. <laughs> Hello? Oh, y'all quiet, y'all don't look at the news. I'm trying, I'm preaching. Oh, y'all, okay, <laughs> Jesus on. loves you. <laughs> this I know. Because the Bible tells you, you must be born again. Sweetness, sweetness, and that good by and by. Yeah. Well, that ain't the, this ain't the place. I'm here to tell you the truth. I'm in the book. Huh? I'm in the book. Huh? We don't want children being spanked anymore. And then we wonder why they're being tased. By the time they're 13. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm definitely an advocate of take out your beltism. Yes, uh, I'm, 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 if you're going to go on strike, strike your child with that belt. On, uh, you want to try to get everybody's money, but you don't want to correct your children. Come on, and let somebody that love God try to correct your child, then you all puffed up, swole up, and no, messed up. No. Uh, hey, oh, it's quiet up in here. I must have some parents in here. Yeah. Amen. I was talking to a policeman the other day. See, y'all don't know I'm in the book right now. Huh? But, but I was talking to a police officer the other day. I said, you know, I teach the people at Word that in the state of Texas, you have a right to spank your child. You can't break a bone and you can't draw blood. Uh-huh. Yeah, children, I love y'all. That's why I'm telling your parents that take out that bell. Hang it up. Put a name on it. Let them see it. Let them see it. Uh-huh. Call it the get out my way moment. Do what I say and get out my way. Hello? And the police officer said, you know, I'm glad you do that because a lot of parents don't know. If you're 11 years old, you can spank your child. If your child is 11, you can spank them. Huh? And there's a different ball game when they get up in age because you don't really want to spank them. You want to punch them, but you can't punch them. Hello? Because some, y'all know what I'm talking about. Some kids, like, yeah, because look at the leaders of this land. Nobody's responsible for nothing. On, we let criminals out of Guantanamo Bay yeah. to go back and do it. Tried to kill us. Yep, yep. And the leaders said, oh, well, we're going to let them go. Oh. And we're going to free a crook that's in our army. And we're going to spend all this money to go get this deserter, this coward. Right. Well, you know, birds of a feather <laughs> flock together. Yep, right. Cowards like the company of cowards. Hello? It's just the truth. And then they go over there and try to call themselves going to rescue some folks and kill our people. Because there was nobody on the ground to see. I've never heard of leading from behind before I heard this president take office. He needs to repent. Somebody out there, if you know him, tell him that the Lord God Almighty tells Barack Obama he needs to repent Amen. and get saved. Amen. 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 And all them sorry Congress people up there scared him. Why? Because he black? So what? I don't care if he polka dot. A lie is a lie. Hello? The Bible says all lies have their part in the lake. that burn it with fire and brimstone. All liars. So if you're a practicing liar, stop lying so you won't burn. But, okay, y'all don't think I'm in the book. But let me tell you something. Christians need to be concerned about praying for our children and about praying for one another. We really need to do that because the world don't love your children. This system is designed to get your children away from you. It's designed to separate men from their children. This system don't want men at home with their women. That's why they pay them in food stamps and AFDC. And that's why they want to lock your husband up for putting some leather on that nether. Uh-huh, they want to, uh-huh, and, and then, you know, this is where we are. You got men that really don't care about family because they don't know what family is. They weren't brought up in a family. They think, well, when you don't want to put up with it, you separate yourself from it because that's what men do. No, they don't. Men take a stand. You stay at home. I know, I, I left the family once. Uh-huh, I sure did. Had nothing to do with the kids, but it affected the kids. Amen. 
And so God got me for that. Amen. But but I tell you what, God's mercy showed up too. Amen. Hello? Y'all read a, y'all heard a poem from one of those children that was with that wife that I left Amen. this morning. That's the mercies of God. Amen. That's my son. Amen. Amen. I didn't raise him, but God had mercy and brought him back to me. Amen. Hello, somebody. That's why I know it's wrong. Huh? You're going to leave your kids and then, and, and what's really messed up, the world teaches you how to talk about your spouse to your children. You are a first women. Let me tell you, you quit putting your mouth on your children's father. If he was so sorry, how sorry are you for making the baby with him? Wow. Wow. So how sorry are you? Hello? Huh? Well, I didn't know he was like that. He didn't know you was like this either. Talk about yourself first. Hello? I'm trying to help you. Uh, see, if you're going to pray, pray, Lord, help me. Help me first. You know, fix this up because this is messed up. Uh, and then I'm going to pray, Lord, help my spouse uh, re- to receive the fixed up me. Hello? Amen. And, and, and when God start doing the stuff, then the, the men. Hello? Y'all ain't always been saved. Some of us did stupid so well, we should have got a Ph.D. in stupidology. Hello, wives put up with your mess all the time, but then, but, but, but let her spill some salt and you want to call Morton. You want to get the salt police on her. Oh no, you spilled salt on the table. You did it twice this year. Want to get all preach. Jesus said we the salt of the earth and look at that. You know, try to throw scripture in there on it. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm taking my time. Y'all, t- y'all want to see where I'm going, I know, that's all right. But let me tell you, it's very important that you understand something. Men don't wear earrings. Men don't wear fingernail polish. Men don't gauge their earlobes. Okay, men don't wear hip hugger pants. Huh? Men don't go by the name of sissy. They might be a sissy, but you don't call them sissy. If you marry, if you want to get involved with a man that was sorry when you met him, he's probably going to be sorry when you marry him. Uh, you might need to check his credentials before you decide to jump the broom. Huh? Just get the dustpan and be done with it. Uh, and, and see, look, because if he's sorry without Jesus and he marries you, you ain't Jesus. Uh, now, unless you prepare to bring him to Jesus and deal with what happens in the interim, you need to leave it alone. Uh, unless you prepare, some men think they all that in a bag of chips ain't got no backbone. They just like they go home and they looking around and you ask them, what you looking for? I thought I had some backbone. <laughs> now, they left that in the delivery room Whoa. when you was born. Whoa. See, now you can talk to God and he can help you get one. But in order for you to get a backbone, you're going to have to meet somebody with a backbone. So he can show you how to walk when you get it. Instead of walking in vanity, he'll teach you how to walk in power. Hallelujah. I'm trying, I'm trying to take my time. Y'all pray for me. Amen. Go to the book. Y'all see, I'm going to go to the book. Y'all don't think I'm in the book. Go to Jeremiah. It's in the Old Testament. See, but, but this nation, is they need us. Do you know America needs you? They need you praying for this nation. They need you praying for the preachers in this nation. Those that cry loud and spare not. They need you praying. I'm going to tell you something. You think God won't tell somebody not to pray for you. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Y'all in Jeremiah verse, chapter 7 verse 8. Verse 8. Y'all don't mind if I preach a little bit. Take your time. Amen. Say amen when you're there. Amen. Behold, you trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will you steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal, and walk after other gods whom you know not, and come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered to do all these abominations. Is this house which is called by my name become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. But go you now unto my place which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. 
And now, because you have done all these works, saith the Lord, and I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking, but you heard not. And I called you, but you answered not. Therefore will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein you trust, and unto the place which I gave to you and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. And I will cast you out of my sight, as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Wow. You may be seated. Wow. America is in danger of God telling his people not to pray for it. Now, 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 this is a very interesting thing because you don't hear this preached too often. Huh? But, but, but here, here we are told God is telling the people, first of all, he called them liars. He said, because you believe and you trust in lies. In order for you to trust in lies, you have to either be extremely gullible or extremely willing. And, 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 and one of the things about having a willing heart that would believe lies is that there is no stand in you. You'll, you'll lie to yourself thinking you're telling the truth and you'll try to convince other people and get mad when they don't believe your weak truth. huh? Amen. Because you'll, you'll, you'll uncover yourself. You'll show your own hand. God will call your bluff. He'll put a man of God in front of you and he will try to warn you. He'll show you the wicked of your way. Not so that you might perish in that thing, but that you might turn and do that which is right. Because that's what watchmen do. But America is hard in his heart against the word and the will of God. America has set themselves hard as a flint stone against the word and the spirit of God. Thinking that they have discovered the way around God. There is no way around God. But they, they deceive themselves because now they believe there's a way underneath. We can just keep drilling it until we get all the oil out of and all the gas or whatever they're looking for huh? but there is no utopia on this place on, let's look at what he says he says you you trust in lies that cannot profit how huh? you trust in them everybody that I, I i can't believe how people can be so educated and don't know nothing they call, well, I'm, I'm going to vote for Hillary. I'm going to vote for this person. I'm going to vote for that person because I'm a Democrat. Why? Because I, my mom was a Democrat. Well, is, let me ask you something. Some people are Catholics because their mama was Catholic. Some people were Baptists because their daddy was Baptist. Are you going to be a fool because your daddy was a fool? Are you going to be an idiot because your mama was an idiot? What if your mama was a tramp and never did anything good? You going to follow suit? Huh? But when God presents to you those things that are right and good, why don't you latch on to those things? But we're so busy trying to get involved in, in every uh, uh, thing that can move us away from God. We don't even tell, warn our children against it because we don't want our children not to like us. I don't care if your child don't like you. Get, let me give you something. Let me tell you something. Your child may not like you, but they will definitely love you. And they'll appreciate it later on. They may not, they're children. They're not supposed to like it when you ground them. I've never seen a child say, all right, I'm grounded for a month, dude. I've never seen that. Uh, and they don't go out and celebrate, man, I'm having a grounding party. <laughs> and they're not supposed to like it. But America don't want the truth. They want a lie. Yeah. They don't want a prophet telling them to woe. The woe is coming. I'm going to let you know, they up here talking about how San Francisco, this San Francisco, it's a den of thieves, liars, whoremongers, and whores. That place is filthy. And, and I'm going to tell you something, if you want to go to Vegas, you may as well go to New Orleans. Better yet, just go somewhere in Texas. And, and that's why they don't like Texas. It's hard to find that junk in Texas. It really is. You know what I mean? I've been some places. Y'all see, read the news. Y'all see the news, right? I'm not talking about just the sports. King Ginobili ain't doing all that. I'm talking about the news, where people get killed and stuff, the real stuff. The but it's so negative. Really? you got to have the negative. How do you know what to warn your children against? How do you know what to be prepared for if you don't teach your children what's going on in the world around them? Um, this world don't want to hear the preachers tell the truth. They don't want to know that. They want to be all caught up in fashion. They want to be caught up in being popular. They want to be the next Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. They want to be the next this and the next this. Why don't you be the first? Concentrate on just being you. Amen. And being what God has ordained you to be. But see, a lot of people, let me tell you what he did at Shiloh. See, Shiloh is where they decided, well, 
after the division of the land, they said, well, we're going to set this up. It wasn't called Shiloh at first. If you'll read the story, you'll find that they took a, 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 the idols from a man. And they said, well, we're going to take your priest too. Because he had set up some idols in his house and he had his own priest. And, and so these groups, uh, these people said, well, we, we want to have our place. So they set it up in Shiloh. And they, they changed the name. I think the name was Jael. And they changed the name of the town to Shiloh. And, he, and they said, okay, now this is what we go do. But let me show you what, what, what happened at Shiloh. There was a man named Eli. Had two boys. Hophni and Phinehas. And there was a war going on. Uh, and, and the war was raging against the Philistines. Uh, and, and, and they said, well, look, we got a good idea because our dad is the pastor. Our dad is the priest. And so what we're going to do, we're going to go to Shiloh. And we're going to get the Ark of the Covenant because whenever we fought with the Ark of the Covenant, we always won. So they went to get the Ark and they brought the Ark. And they did it right. They brought the Ark correctly. The problem was the Ark was right. They were wrong. Uh, see, that was the problem. Yeah. See, the problem wasn't in Jesus. The problem is in you. The problem's not in the gospel. The problem's in you. Yeah. Huh? But everybody want to make the, well, those Christians. They just so narrow minded. Yes, we are. Right. Narrow is the way. So we have to have narrow minds so we can t walk that narrow way. Yeah. Amen. Right. And so, so now you have what? What did they do? They go to war, and so the Philistines hear about. It. Oh, they brought the covenant from the ark from Shiloh, and they over there praising God, and they shouting, "What's all this shouting going on?" And the Philistines got scared, and one of them stood up and said, "No, quit you like men. We're getting ready to go to battle. You ain't got time to be scared, huh?" And they whooped Israel and stole the ark. Hello, because God wasn't in their junk. God wasn't in their heart. They just thought that they could use God. God is our pet. See, some people, you got to get a clue here. See, first of all, let me tell you something. God ain't your Mr. Fix-It. God ain't your yard boy. He ain't your grocery lad that deliver your groceries to your house. Uh, God ain't your, uh, uh, I'm hurt now, I need you. Uh, you remember when the towers fell? Everybody went to church. Atheists went to church. They would tell, ooh, is this the judgment of God? And the hypocrites that call themselves preachers got up there and said, no, God didn't do this. They may as well put on dresses. Huh? Because God did do this. God didn't get caught off guard when those planes hit those towers. What was God doing? Golfing? No, God was looking. He, he, he set this thing in order. Yeah. But we don't want to hear that. We want to hear, everything is beautiful in its own way, like a starry summer night. You feel a sting at heart. God's judgment is sure. It is certain. It is certain. And his judgment against this land is moving forward as planned. Not according to man's plan. I'm going to tell you. I told my wife some years back. What the Lord has shown me on a particular occasion. I saw America divided. I saw America divided. And there were different countries in this place that we call America. See, I don't know why we think America came because Benjamin Franklin had a bad hairdo. And he was smart and funny. Huh? America came because God had mercy. Because people were praying. Because people were crying out to God. Because people honored and gave him the glory. People knew that's why we put in God. We trust on our money. But now our children in these public schools, parents, you need to watch what your children being taught. Right. Uh, you need to inquire and ask them. Don't get so caught up in your yard sale that you can't talk to your children. Right. Uh, don't be caught up in selling dinners for folks that you can't, can't get talk to your children about what they're learning in school. Because the devil is lying to your children in school. They've been doing it since Sodom and Gomorrah with young little tents. Huh? And that's what they're doing. But let me tell you something. You have an opportunity now, America, to wake up. God is going to give you some more warnings before he divides this nation among those that are your enemies. Don't you know that Russia already owns part of America's uranium? Huh? Russia, guess who sold it to them? The Clintons through Canada. They own one-fifth of American uranium production. That's illegal, and it's wrong, and it's dangerous. 
Huh, you need to hear what I'm telling you today. You go roller skating, you play your games, and you look at dancing with the stars and voices and, 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 and hoarders and all of that junk, and you forget that God's judgment is set. God's judgment is set. These congressmen, they, 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 they place their placards and their awards, and, and they go swimming in their backyards, and they do all of these things, and then they feign that they love God. They go to God's churches, and they feign that they love Him. They pretend to be men of righteousness and women of holiness, yet they're sleeping with wolves. And they dance with devils all day long. And they sup with those that despise our king. And we want to pray for them. Preach, preach, preach. Come on. Hallelujah. God is going to withdraw the prayers of his righteous upon this nation. And if you think China is out of the pocket, wait until you go to San Francisco and China is on, owned by, you talk about made in China. They're going to boast. Made in America. Owned by China. Them some Want some? You need to hear what I'm saying. It sounds a little funny, but watch. Russia's going to own Alaska again. Y'all don't believe this can happen in your day because we America. We got iPods, expensive watches that tell you where to go. Oh, sure. Now, God, God would never let that happen to us. You better remember Shiloh. Shiloh is falling. Amen. And you need to go. See, and so what the word Shiloh means, rest. That land is resting. God saw to it. Amen. He said, but go you now to my place, which was in Shiloh. He said, take a look at it. I want you to remember some history. You remember a man named Adolf Hitler? Huh? Everybody thought, see, they started pretending, well, maybe he just don't get it yet. That's what they say about Barack Obama. Well, maybe he just don't, under, I don't think he understands. He fully understands. Americans are pretty much blind. Now he's getting, he stands in his room every night and says, all right, thank you, Allah. He rolls out his carpet and says, thank you, Allah. My brother's in Iran. I'm doing everything I can. My friend in Russia, I'm doing everything I can to bring down this devil. They picked a good actor. He's a better actor than Ronald Reagan. That's right. Yo, y'all don't believe that. It just sounds too impossible. How can all these politicians not know this? What aren't they saying? Oh, there's been a few. They're crying, but the people don't want to hear that. Uh -uh. They want to hear who Kardashian is going to marry what sorry man. They want to hear Bruce Jenner become a woman. That's what they want to hear about. They don't want to hear about what this man is doing to destroy this nation. They don't want to hear about what this nation is doing to destroy the hearts of our children. They don't want to hear about that. Oh, no, that, you're so negative. You're just stupid. You're without wisdom, without God, without reason. Uh, there has to become a time when people stand up and be men and women of God. Be aware of what God is doing in his kingdom. Be aware. We'll, 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 we'll won't God let you break your leg. You'll be all up here crying, Lord, I broke my leg the other day. Oh, heal my leg. Huh? But when God said, will you fast with me? Will you fast for me three days? Oh, well, three days. Ooh. And you start telling them your schedule. But I'm supposed to meet Peggy for lunch. And she, you know, we've been canceling and canceling and canceling. Uh, but uh, 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 I'm a diabetic, and, and the, the doctor, doctor really don't want me to. You know, I'm I'm, I'm a diabetic though. See, and 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 when that, when I don't eat right, you know, it really just affects my mind, and I go around and I start eating tires, you know, and so I don't want to do that anymore. Come up with all kinds of silly stuff. But we're America. And our military is one of the brightest and weakest in the, it has ever been since wow. World War I, wow. World War II. Wow. It has never been. And, 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 but we sit back and we're concerned about idiocy. We don't even pray. Mm. Lord, open the eyes of our leaders. Lord, open our teachers' hearts to receive the truth. Yeah. Huh? We don't even want to sit down with our kids. So why should we expect anybody else? Oh, huh? And we get all upset with, with our husband or with our wife. And then we don't want to praise God in church because I'm upset and I'm tired. Well, I'm too tired. Ooh, I was just tired. I did three loads of laundry yesterday, so that took all my praise energy. Where'd you do laundry? Ask them. Where'd you do laundry? At home. How did you? Oh, what? Did you do a wash bucket with a scrub? No. I have this beautiful laundry washer and dryer that I'm the Lord blessed me with, and and it's just so awesome. Really? Is it gas powered or coal powered? No. All I have to, it's electricity, Bishop. Right. So where did electricity come from? Oh, so who enabled you to pay your bills? Because I get paid pretty good. Who You got a job? Who gave you that job? How do you get up in the morning to go to that job? 
Where did you get the water to wash your clothes? Where did you get the clothes that even got dirty? What in the world are you talking about? I'm too tired to praise my God. Well, that's just not the way I am. And then the men that, that mess up, they get all mad and, and they mad at Bishop because Bishop seen them and they don't want to hear how to be a man because they already a man. Ain't no more man than this handkerchief. Come on, preacher. Wow. Just as flimsy as it too. Wow. I'm going to do this. Oh, oh no, I can't do this. I'm going to do this. Oh no, I can't do this. So I'm going to do this. But I'm just as much man as you, Bishop. You sissy. You ought to get a hug. Oh, forgive me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. I'm trying to give you some insight as to what God is about to do. If you think God don't know how to unleash judgment on an individual, you need to ask David. You need to go and talk to King David in your Bibles. You know, that thing that you got in your house with all the dust on it. Get it one day. Dust it off. Go to First and Second Samuel, First and Second King. Go to it. You know, just to, and, and try to find Mike break now because it's been closed so long it's probably stiff. Yeah, might need somebody to help you open that thing up. Look, now, 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 now look, I remember prophesying at Prince of Peace Church. Some 14 years ago, it was hot. Y'all think it's warm in here? It was hot. The wind was blowing. Felt like you was in a hair dryer. That's how hot it was. That's the truth. And, and I was preaching, and the word of the Lord came to me and said, Tell this people that my arm is about to move across this nation. My arm of judgment is about to move across this nation. And I will have my day. I will set forth my judgment against this nation. Because the people don't want me anymore. They don't want to do what I say anymore. They want, to, they want to go out. Have you ever noticed how in the poor neighborhoods you got a bunch of liquor stores? That's what y'all ought to be protesting. Huh? That's what you need to protest. You ever notice how when you walking in that Martin Luther King march, how many drug dealers is making deals while they marching? That's what you ought to be trying to get rid of. Huh? That young woman that's going to CPS lying on her husband because she just wants the state to take care of, take care of her. Women, you ought to be mad at every woman that does that. And you ought to sit them down and pray with them and say, what kind of woman are you that would do that to your man? Hello? Amen. Don't you know the state will pay you not to be married but make babies? That's right. And the CPS people, so they so bought and paid for they are. They want your husband to be away from you. So your man cannot prosper and be what he needs to be for you because that looks too much like godly. Huh? They don't want your man praying. They don't want your man teaching your children how to pray. They don't want your man doing that. They want him in jail. So all you got to do is pick up your phone and say, my husband beat me. And that, that's it. You got the wheels turning in your behalf, especially if you chocolate. Oh, yeah, it's been a while. You know why? Because we strong. I ain't saying everybody else ain't strong, but we have a different kind of strength. We weathered some hard stuff over here in this day and age. Latinos, too. Chinese, Japanese, too. Some hard things. But black men had to overcome some, some, some miserable conditions. Huh? And, but, but you know what blows their minds is how are they able to get back up again and move forward? Look at what we've accomplished in less, than, in, in less than 150 years of freedom. We're still right there with the white guy now. And I'm not pro-black, pro-white, but I'm just showing you how things are. We're right there with them now. So they, now they got to figure out another way. Huh? So they, they invented women's live. Because the master's wife didn't know how to cook like sister. Mammy get in the kitchen or Consuelo get in the kitchen, she wear it out. Huh? But you, <laughs> you get Susan in there and <laughs> she picks up a whisk. How do you roll your hair with this? <laughs> Why do you think they were so quick to invent frozen food TV dinners? Swanson was a white man's idea because the woman couldn't cook. <laughs> Hun, they didn't know how to iron, right? Have 14 creases because Sister and Consuela was doing it. Huh? So they had to make they had to make some laws. They had to make some laws to get the sisters back to work. 
Because they were taking care of their men and their men were buying houses on the corner. Uh -huh. It used to be that there was this plan that wouldn't sell black folks' as houses on the corner. You couldn't buy a corner house back in the 60s. You, if you're old enough, you might remember some of that. It's hard. You know why? Because that's prime land. That's where you enter a neighborhood that's on the corner. Any neighborhood, you, you have to turn a corner. You got to enter a corner, don't you? I'm a right sister. Amen. <laughs> She's so young. Talk about, yeah. She, 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 was, she wasn't even around with ballpoint pens were invented. Amen. But what is God saying? God's judgment is going to come. And God's judgment is going to send forth a dividing rod. Not a divining rod, but a dividing rod. And he's going to allow the enemies to come into this land as they are here now. They are here now. Timothy McVeigh was only the beginning of terrible acts. The Boston Marathon bombing is going to look like a mosquito bite compared to what God has planned for this nation. Because the people refuse to repent. The women refuse to humble themselves to their husbands. And the husbands refuse to humble themselves to the, the Christian leaders that are living according to God's word. They don't want to do right. So that's fine. God's had enough. Let me tell you how I know that because in his word, the prophet Jeremiah says, therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. You know, people didn't believe Adolf Hitler was going to do what he did. They thought he was just another fanatic. You know how he learned how to do that? What he did? He learned genocide from Americans. He learned that from Americans. See, he learned how to kill like that because he was inspired by American technology and American genius. Yeah, because see, in America, they were injecting people with syphilis on purpose. In America, they bought and sold cocaine, the government did, in black and Latino neighborhoods to, under, to rip the undergirdings of family and, and financial prosperity from them. Uh, and they call themselves God. They'll go to church with their heads held high and their hearts are fully black. Uh, God is angry at this nation. And my job for you today, my job to tell you today is that you need to make sure that when you pray, you pray for your house first. You pray for your house and you pray for your spirit. You pray for your soul because this nation belongs to God. And God is getting ready to wring it like a bad, like a bad sponge. There's not going to be any more moisture in this nation. God is getting ready to divide it. Do you hear me today? If you've never heard anything I said today, you need to listen to me. And some of you will be standing to see this when this occurs. Some of us will not see this occur. But some of us will be standing and we will see it. And we will remember. And these children will remember. You tell them they're going to remember the pastor, the prophet of God said that God's judgment was coming and he was going to divide this land. Texas is going to bring to itself a couple of states. And Texas is going to be a safe haven for those that truly love justice and truly love that which is right. So before you decide to take yourself to Canada, you need to pray. Before you decide to take yourself to England, because it's jolly good, uh, you need to pray. Before you decide to go bon voyage to the Francais, then you need to really be praying. Because there's going to be a hiding place for those. Because he told me that when he sends his judgment, he will preserve those. He'll preserve his people. Now, some of us will die in that transition. A lot of us are going to die. But you cannot be those that fear death. We are those that worship our king with joy in our hearts. What can I, why should I fear what man could do unto me? You can only kill me one time. After that, I'm sleeping until Jesus come and get me. Hello? And when Jesus come and get me, I'm going to be caught up with him, brother. I'm going to meet him in the clouds. The Bible says I'll be with him forever and ever and ever. I don't, even, I don't have to worry about Super Bowl parties. Amen. But, but, but we need to pray and you need to get serious in your word. Pick up your Bible and read your Bible. See what God has done. See what God is doing and see what God is going to do. Jesus said, watch and pray. Watch and pray. Pray. That means be aware of what's going on. Watch what God is doing in this hour in his kingdom with his people. Watch what God is doing. You want God to move on your behalf, then you call upon his name. You have faith in him. You trust him. You believe him. And you humble yourself first to people you can see, and then you humble yourself to God. Because you can't humble yourself to God without humbling yourself to people in authority around you. 
um, excuse me, Missy, but you can go to God all you want, but if you're treating your husband like he ain't nothing, then you have nowhere to go. Excuse me, husband, you, can, you want to go to God all you want, but you can't treat your wife like she ain't nothing. Huh? So I'm, I'm going to tell you something. It, it's a scary thing to fall into the hand of a living God. Amen. It's scary. You can't just mistreat each other and get all pumped up in yourself. Well, I want you out. Okay. I remember a young man came and prayed for me. He was shacking up with a young woman. And he wanted me to bless his house, his apartment. I, and I couldn't, the Lord forbid me from going into the bedroom. I was getting ready to go in the bedroom and, and pray in the bedroom. And it was like something was there. I said, I can't go in there. He said, I said, what room is this? He said, it's our bedroom. I said, really? I said, I can't go in this room. I said, I can't, bl- I can't sp- I'm, I'm staying out of that room. So, he, so when we got, I got ready to leave, he said, can you pray that the Lord move to change our situation because we shacking up, you know. I said, are you sure you want me to pray that for you? He said, yeah. I said, you do know God hears me. When I pray, God's going to move. I don't know how he's going to move, but he's going to move. All right? So I did. Two weeks later, he was over my house. <laughs> ringing the I said, hold on, hold on. I, I said, hey. He said, I need to talk to you. I said, come on up. I said, you all right? He said, what did you do? I said, what do you mean, what did I do? I said, what happened? You asked me to pray that the Lord would change your situation. He said, yeah. He said, but, 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 but she kicked me out. I said, well, your situation has changed. <laughs> huh? I want my wife to come home. Oh, I don't want her no more. But didn't you say you wanted to come home? Yeah, but you don't understand. I know that God heard me. And the reason, I'm going to tell you, so be careful. Because God will do that just to show you who's God. He'll do that. He'll have you on your back trying to breathe through tubes just to show you who's God. You better watch your conduct. Because like my daddy used to say, I ain't two inches off you, boy. My daddy used to say, boy, you skating on thin ice. My dad would say, you jumping rope on skin and thin ice, boy. <laughs> you don't want to, you, I'd rather skate on thin ice than jump rope. You jumping rope on thin ice. <laughs> one, more, one more move. One more move. Why is this important? It's important for the salvation of our children that we understand. What is the prophet saying? The prophet isn't just talking to those. Oh, well, he was talking to them then. He's a prophet. He speaks to your yesterday, your tomorrow, and those days that he will never see. Because God shows him those things. And when God showed me that arm moving across this nation some 14 years ago, it shook me, especially when I saw the dividing of America. I began to tell my wife which states were going to go where, didn't I? Uh-huh, that's right. And, 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 the, and Rome is going to own a lot of the Northeast. You, that little place called Rome in Spain, they're going to have a lot invested in the Northeast. Cuba, you think Cuba? Watch Brazil. They'll partner up, and Iran going to be right behind them, and they're going to be buying up this nation. Did you know as of 1979 in Temple, Texas, Iraq used to own the federal building? That's right. Huh? But, but we don't care. We, we got soccer moms. That's important. I got to make sure I have my oil changed. I got soccer business. Really get real. You are not going to be around forever. Your days are numbered. Your days will be short. What are you leaving behind for your children? Are you teaching them how to pray and trust in God? Or not to be late for the, for the program, but to be late to church? Oh, it's okay to be late to church. We can. Pl- we are not going to plan too much Saturday night because it's too much like being right. So I'm going to teach you how to make the excuse for being late for church. Okay, kiddies? I'm going to teach you how to make excuses for being late. You don't know you're doing that. But every time your smart, brilliant children see you do not, do, not doing what you're supposed to be doing in a timely fashion, you're teaching them. That's why some of the men in here are sorry with time. Not because they were taught. Don't, you don't have to be on time. This is how you make an excuse. That's wrong. God expects us to be people that understand time is valuable. It's a precious tool. You don't get a whole lot of it. So you may as well use it while you have it. And you need to teach your children how to use it so they're not procrastinators and excuse makers and cry babies when things don't go their way because they were late. How do you expect to keep a job and you late every day? Uh, come on. 
You want God to move Mount Kilimanjaro for you. But you too late. You can't even get up and be on time. All you got to do is so I, I, I can do that. I can take five kids home with me. Keep them for a week. By Saturday night, we'll be ready to be on time Sunday morning. Amen. They don't even have to be my kids. Amen. Huh? But I'll show them in a week's time how to be on time. Amen. And send them back to you, whoever you are, and be, be shaking my head next Sunday. Talking about really. Kid be talking about what Bishop told us. If we do this, we'll be on time. And all we got to do is make sure we brush our teeth tonight and iron our clothes tonight and lay them out. And, and that's not hard. All you got to do is get up and say, get up, kids, get dressed. I'm getting dressed. You better be ready by the time I'm run, done. You understand me? If they're not, give them that first Sunday to taste. Didn't I tell you to? You know? <laughs> what you doing in there looking at cartoons on Sunday morning? What you doing in there looking at TV on Sunday morning? Didn't I tell you to get up there and get there? Yes, ma'am. And then, then next Sunday, guarantee you they'll be ready. Guarantee. But some of y'all can't get, oh, I'm so tired. I was watching TV till 3 o'clock. I was. Friend me. Like. Do you like? Friend me. You see me? I'm, I'm Facebooking you. Take a picture of your peanut butter, jelly, and milk. That's what I'm snacking on right now. Got your Bible wide open over here, and you gone to town. And the Lord said, be on time. Well, Lord, the Lord understands. I was studying. I was studying. I was in the Word. Really? See, Preachers don't want to talk about conduct. I'm teaching you some stuff by the Holy Ghost. Quit lying to yourself. You know you're sorry. Compare yourself to somebody that you know ain't sorry. That's the best way to do it. I'm sorry. They're not. Let's see why I'm sorry and they're not. Consistent. Inconsistent. Okay. Man of their word. Not a man of my word. Okay. Uh, on time. Not on time. Okay. Make you want to cut your left hand off. <laughs> you know when you sorry huh? when men tell you quit complaining man you need to check yourself if a man that loves you tell you stop doing this stop doing this stop doing this and you say I'm not doing that I'm not doing that I'm not doing that and you're doing it and you know you're doing it who do you deceive hello and you'll never grow beyond it until you humble yourself and get serious with God you must first get serious with you and how God deals with you and then get serious with God so that he can use you. Because once you do that, then all bets are off with Satan. Satan ain't got no place. He can't, he can't, he, there's no victory then. Because when he raises up his head, you're cutting it off with the word of God. Huh? Though as it is written, as it is written, as it is written, as it is written. Oh, oh, but you can't handle this. Yes, I can. Oh, no, you remember the last time I can handle this because I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. But the Bible also says, as it is written, he will not put more on me than I'm able to bear without leaving me a means of escape. Can I handle this? I can handle this. What? Bring it on. I can handle this. Why? Because I serve in the king's army at the king's pleasure. I'm one of the king's children. I can do all things through Christ with strength. I don't have to lie. I don't have to dip and dive. I don't have to pray to a st statue. I don't have to look at some midget man on a cross. That ain't Jesus. That's somebody's idea of a whatever on the cross. My Jesus reigns. He's alive. He's at the right hand of the throne of God. My Jesus lives. Hallelujah. He's not slain. He rose again. Again. Yeah. He, he, he abides in me and I abide in him. He's not dead. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We got to get this thing. And we got to get this thing right. And we got to get yeah. this thing now because the devil is about to raise up his head. You have not seen the terror God is about to bring upon this nation. I'm going to tell you, you're going to be weeping. You're going to be hard pressed to work without tears in your eyes when God lay down what he's getting ready to lay down on America. If you don't hear me any other time, you need to hear me today. Hear this right now. God is angry at the wicked every day. He will not stop. He will not stay his hand except his people cry to him. Mercy. Mercy. He's going to do it. You better, I'm telling you, you better hear what I'm telling you today. Hallelujah. 
You haven't seen anything. You've not seen enemy planes over the sky of America, but you get ready. Do you hear me? You better trust what I'm telling you. This nation thinks, oh, the God is, he's, he says the pride of this nation stinks like putrid vomit in his nostril. The hypocrisy smells like so many years of manure piled into one corner. That's what this nation, he is sick of this thing. The Bible says God will not, he will not, he will not repent of this thing. Know this, brother, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. You know, God, God, it, he did enough for this. He's done so much for this nation. You know that? He opened up riches, chasms of riches, chasms and chasms of, of riches, and we've turned away from it because women got caught up. I'm woman, hear me roar. Shut up. Hello, we know you're a woman when you dress like one. Huh? You want us to respect you as a woman while you looking like Ricky. I'm a woman. How you? How I know you're a woman? You look like a dude. You act like a dude. You cussing and spitting, oh, man. scratching. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't want to hear a husband love you against all odds. Husband trying to love you and be a man for you and taking you to church and all of this thing and you want to act like a complete and total nut. Don't want to pray. Well, I don't feel like praying. Why, well, why not? I'm too upset. Well, that's why you need to pray. Because you're upset. Lord, help me not feel this way. Huh? I, I, I can't understand how you're just going to cuss your husband out. Somebody need to hear this. How are you just going to cuss your In front of your kids. Talk to him like he's nothing. And then wonder why the man's so broke down. You got the master's whip now. You're the one beating him down now. Huh? And then you wonder why he can't go up there and build you a, a castle on, on, on Mount Everest. Well, you done took all this gumption out of him. Poor man trying to do right and you just wearing him out. Get upset because he come home from work late. Do working late, making you money. Where you think you got that false hair you wearing? Huh? Got them 18-inch heels. You can dress up to go somewhere, but you can't dress up to stay home and please your husband. Hello? Put them on for him. Put you some fishnets on for your man. Everybody else get to see him. Why not him? I'm trying to tell you something. I'm trying to help you. Husband out there on the basketball court all buff. Got his I love Jesus shirt on. Huh? And can't, can't hardly shoot the ball because women out there half naked. Jogging. Poor bro can't get his game on. Ladies of America, please dress. Put some clothes on. Quit going to the grocery store in yoga pants. You've been deceived. Those are dark stockings. They're just dark stockings. they they dark stockings. You look nasty, sweaty, just got work out. Don't nobody want to see you like that. You ain't no man. Be a woman. Men supposed to look and smell like that. You coming up in there like rotted cabbage. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Yeah, women can stink. I'm trying to help just those that. <laughs> I'm trying to help somebody. Men supposed to be smelling like that. Come up there, how got rollers in your head? Why are you going to the store with rollers in your head? Take them things out your head. Put a dress on. They still make dresses. Uh, it's better than a burqa. But that ain't good enough. Y'all need britches, cowboy britches. You need to look like a man. Saw a young lady the other day. Got out of a truck. It, I was ashamed for her. I, I started to say, please give your little sister her shorts back. That's ridiculous. Them shorts were so tight, I couldn't hardly breathe. I'm surprised her legs weren't green for lack of blood. Look, I'm serious. They were tight. She... Tried to, how you walk in them things without bleeding all over yourself? <laughs> Look like them things ought to draw blood. Seriously, brother, it's a shame. But, we, but, but, but a lot of them go to church and never hear anything about it. Never hear anything about it. They don't hear that. Men, you don't talk to your wife like she's useless. You give her some honor. You treat her with some respect and some dignity, and you shut up sometimes. 
and quit down talking your wife to your children, idiot. Amen. You sorry to do that. It's a sissy. That's a sissy spirit. That's a effeminate spirit that'll do that. Because a real man won't do that. Unless he's got an effeminate spirit. You have to be half sissy to talk down to your children about your wife. There's something wrong with you. You ain't saved. You backslidden in your heart. That's just the truth. I, I, I don't care. Get mad at me until your head blow up, roll off, and stop traffic. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. It's time to stand up and be a man. Say, okay, I don't like the way he said it. I don't like that he said it. But I know God intends this for me. It's time for me to grow up and be a man. It's time for me to grow up and be a man. It's time for me to stop this foolishness and be a man of my word. That's where your honor is. Huh? That's where a man will respect you for going through the fires and the trials of this life and coming out shining with the glory of God before he'll respect you because somebody hurt your widow feelings and you won it. But you on my widow Phil, you don't understand. She, 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 she. What about V, 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 V? Hello? Be a man if you're a man. Amen. Ain't that right, Brother Trey? Amen. I'm almost through. I can feel the Holy Spirit. Come on. Come on. He, he's working somebody. Somebody, somebody's glad to hear this. Somebody, somebody, they may not even be there, but somebody's glad to hear. Thank you, Lord, for saying these things. Amen. Amen. Because if you can't get it right before the judgment really begins to open up, when he opens it up, you be, you can't buy no lamp oil. You can't be buying no lamp oil. You can't be, uh, can't be running, try to run across town and say you're sorry too late. Bomb took out that street. Uh-huh. You, you better get yourself right, get your spirit right. But people think they can be ugly at home and holy in church and thank God don't see you. God see you at home. God, see how you ugly you are? Can't talk to nobody with dignity and respect, always nasty, and then want to blame everybody else because you nasty. Well, if you, didn't, if you didn't like that person in your past, if they're no longer in your, in your present, then stop being nasty. They're not there anymore. Amen. Let me tell you what's going to happen. Those that hear today will be blessed because they're going to begin to pray differently. You need to pray for these children. You need to pray for this nation. But you must first pray, Lord, give me strength. Help me see what's going on. Help me understand what it is you have for me so that I might be prepared to help others. You've, you've heard it before. You can't help somebody when you can't help yourself. God wants to strengthen you. He wants to give, make you able to be winners of souls. He wants you to be those people that sound the shofar and warn people that Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. He's coming. Oh, and they say, oh, but they've been saying this for a long time. Now, where's the promise of his return? Don't you be caught sleeping. Um, be caught being about your father's business. So that when Jesus does return and you hear that trump and you hear that shout and you hear that clap, whether you be underground or above ground, you will hear. Because the word of God says the first, the dead in Christ shall rise. And we that remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air, in the clouds, to be with him even forever. I'm glad today. Although the chaos is coming, I serve a God that still reigns in the midst of chaos. He brings peace and hope to those that fear to perish, those that desire to know him and to be with him. He'll raise you up. He'll give you strength to go on when it feels like you just can't go any further. And he'll help you put away those foolish things. Put away lying and greed and hypocrisy and selfishness and meanness. Just talk to him. He's waiting. He's waiting to talk to you. Personal conversation. If you want to hear from him, if you want him to hear you, you need to get rid of the mess. You must enter the throne room with a clean heart or be ready to have a clean heart. If you know you've fallen short of the glory of God, if you know you have fallen so far away from it that the devil is telling you there's no longer any hope for you, if you're in this place today, there's hope for you. There's hope for you, but don't you squander it on another lie. Don't come up here with a lie in your heart. I'm going to do whatever the Lord tell me to do. And then you know you ain't going to do it. You've done that enough. You've done it enough. It's best for you to just remain seated if you're not going to let him change it. 
Amen. If you're hurting because someone's injured your soul and you really want God to heal you and to work in your soul and to work in your spirit, you've come to the right place. The Holy Spirit is here today. The Holy Ghost is here today. The Holy Ghost can help you understand your purpose and the, the purpose that, uh, that God will carry you through to get to your destiny. This is real. Jesus told Nicodemus, he said, Nicodemus, he said, you must be born again. What is born again? Born is not the born again is not you fixing you it's you allowing God to dwell in you so he can do what he's got to do with your life. This is very real. The things that God shows me are very real. He doesn't show me everything, but he shows me some things. And I know that God has a plan. God has a plan that is good for those that are here today. He desires to build you up and to grow you up. He desires that you will no longer have to feel like you're alone in this thing. You're not alone in this thing. God wants you to know that when his judgment comes, he'll preserve you. He'll preserve you to the end. But you must belong to him. You must give him your life. Why don't you make that change right now?